What's going on? My name is Psyche, and in case you just wanted to watch the highlight shown at the beginning of the video, I'm going to leave the timestamp right now. So if that's what you came here for, just use the timestamp. But if you want to see how I got into that position, then keep watching. So welcome back to another Dead Cells video. Today we'll be Today I'll be doing a glass cannon tactic spill with ice shards as well as pyrotechnics and I will also be showcasing one of the new items, the scarecrow sickles, which by my experience actually worked out pretty well. So in case this is anyone's first time watching, I post Dead Cells content, mainly guides as well as 5 BC runs just like this one, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It takes up no time and it really helps me out, and you can unsubscribe at any time if you change your mind. So without further ado, let's get into the run. So just starting off with in the prisoner's quarters, I just picked whichever items kind of felt right to me. And with the quick bow, I feel like it's very helpful, especially in the early game. Plus, I just recently found out that you can actually hold the attack button while you're using the quick bow and that like rapidly shoots the arrows out, which is something I never knew. If you wanted to maximize DPS while using the quick bow, you can do that. If you're wondering why I don't have the build shown in the thumbnail, at this point of the game yet, that's because I do all of my runs in normal mode. So I just kind of see what items I get and I kind of just adapt to everything. So I'm going to move on forwards to the Dilapidated Arboretum. This is not a biome that I come very often. Um, I feel that you really need a range setup in order to excel at this biome since a lot of the platforms are really long and there are thornies you have to worry about. So you kind of need a range setup to handle them effectively because if you come here with like a melee weapon, you're gonna have to adjust your position in order to hit the thornies because you can't hit it from the backside. But luckily with the quick bow, and it looks like it also has piercing shots, so that's always a bonus. Um, I feel like a lot of the bows, if it doesn't have piercing, then it's pretty much worthless. Or it's not worthless, it's just way worse. Run into an elite yeeter, not a problem, just use the quick bow and take all of them out. I believe that if you do a parry, while you have like arrows stuck in enemies, then it gives you all your arrows back, though I could be wrong about that. Gonna keep going on with the level. I'm gonna skip forward any parts that aren't as interesting, so... Basically me just traversing around the biome looking for food or shops. So even with this like beginner setup, I'm doing a lot of good damage, and I knew I wanted to do a tactics build. Because I know so far on the channel I've posted like 4 brutality builds and like 1 survival build. So I wanted to give more attention to the other colors that are not- that's not brutality essentially. So right now I'm also editing the video where I talk about my journey to reaching 1000 subscribers. I'm not sure who's gonna watch it or like, like it. So I'm probably not gonna do something like that ever again in the future. Just right now, as I'm recording this commentary, I am editing that video right now. So it'll probably be out in a couple of days. Um, like I said, I earned 1000 subscribers extremely quickly and like I went on Reddit and a lot of other channels, they usually take around a couple months to even reach the 1,000 subscriber milestone. So on YouTube, I believe reaching the first 1,000 subscribers is probably the most difficult part of like any YouTuber's career. Because in order to like push your content out, you kind of have to get YouTube to recommend your content. But the thing is, if your videos don't have enough views, then YouTube will just not recommend it because they don't have enough data. So I think like the most important part is like somehow get your videos or at least one of your videos to like a couple thousand views first and then YouTube will start recommending it and then more people will watch you because now you have a wider audience like more people will pay attention to your videos because they saw one of them and they'll most likely check out your other stuff as well. So at the shop I tried to dual bind the pyrotechnics with the inventory bow but it didn't really work out too well and now I found the ice shards inside the 60 kill door but I didn't record while I was in the transition area. Just gonna move on forwards to the prison depths and I'm going to dual bind the ice shards with the pyrotechnics. Um, you can see how much damage it's just going to do, although if you really think about it, it doesn't really synergize well, considering one of them deals with slowdown synergy and the other one deals with fire. So, I mean, it doesn't really work well, but when it's dual binded, it just does a lot of damage. Now at this point, I wanted to get an item that inflicts oil on the enemy so I can benefit more off of the ice shards. I think what tactics builds really excel at are like dual binding opportunities because like there are a lot of really fast items on tactics and if you bind like two fast items together you can essentially like almost double your dps so at one point i picked up the oil grenade so if i use it then i will inflict 
oil on the enemy, which then I will be able to get critical hits off of the ice shards. So that's like a really basic combo that you can do. Um, ice shards is like an item that's available in both tactics and survival, so there are a lot of really interesting opportunities with it. On my tier list, I gave Ice Shards S tier. I think that makes a lot of sense, considering there's just so many ways to use this item. And some people even think that, like, the Ice Shards can replace any shield entirely, because it's just... It does so much for you, like, it slows down the enemy, and it just does, like, massive DPS. So I think, like, the main struggle in Prison Depths are definitely gonna be the hammers. They're really tough to kill, and if you don't have a good enough setup at this point of the game, then they're, like, one of, like, your worst nightmares in the run. I mean, I can totally understand some people say that Prison Depths is harder than Corrupted Prison. And although you do have to deal with Slammers in the Corrupted Prison, one can argue that the Hammers in this biome is just as bad, so... I wanted to try out the Lightning Rod, that's why I put it in one of my skill slots, but I don't know, it just didn't feel like it fit well. I picked up a Corrupted Power because I'm already dealing so much DPS. If I got Corrupted Power, I would just, like, increase that even more. And that's exactly what I wanted, because I think Tactics is all about, like, a glass cannon playstyle. It's all about high risk, high reward. And you'll see in this, in Morass of the Banish, I'm just gonna, like, pretty much melt through every single enemy that I come across. So, with this Elite Slasher, you know, not even a challenge, just press square a couple times and the enemy dies. There are a lot of small, squishy enemies, so that's what makes this biome perfect. If you have, like, a high DPS build, and on top of that, if you fight Mama Tick, because the whole arena is covered in water, you will always deal critical hits with the ice shards. And for some reason, I picked up the food. I probably should have looked a bit more so I didn't like make any mistakes. I meant to pick up the scroll fragment, but I picked up the food instead. So, kind of a blunder on my part, but I was just like, I'm just having so much fun at this point, and I don't really like pay attention to my surroundings. And you can see like just how much DPS I'm able to do, and I haven't even taken a single instance of damage in this biome yet. Combined with the Parting Gift mutation, basically any type of enemy that dies will just drop a bomb and kill any other enemies nearby. So you can see how helpful that's gonna be and it doesn't really require too much effort from my part. So I'm just gonna let like this entire part of this biome footage play because I'm just doing so much DPS right now. Like I'm just mindlessly mashing square and everything is in front of me just dies. Um, I'm not sure if this is considered entertaining to watch, but I am definitely having fun with this so far. So there we are, I find the Cursed Chest, gonna speed up the footage a little bit, so... I pick up a Double Cross Somatic, which I actually replace. For some reason, I, I don't quite remember why I did it, but... I'm definitely having second thoughts about like some of the turrets in the game because I rated the double cross momatic as well as the heavy turret on C tier on my skills tier list. And honestly, they're actually not that bad now that I look at it. I think what the heavy turret really excels at is locking down the enemy because it has really nice breach power. When I say breach power, it refers to like the ability to stun enemies. If you look at my current setup, because I have Ice Shards and Pyrotechnics, they don't have a lot of breach. They just dish out a bunch of DPS. But if you look at something like the Broadsword, which has like a really slow attack speed, but it does a lot of damage, you can kind of like lock down the enemy in place when you stun it, if you hit it a bunch of times. So here I'm getting into a really tricky situation, but I'm just going to get the scroll fragment just to give myself a little breathing room and then use like the pause time. Like basically if you pick up a scroll fragment or a scroll then like nearby enemies will just stop attacking you for a second and you can kind of use that to your advantage. I'm not sure if it counts as cheating but honestly I use it all the time and most of the time I'm not even aware that I'm doing it. So yeah, just keep on going with the biome. I haven't taken a single instance of damage yet and I'm already at 140 kills without taking damage. So it's just been a phenomenal run so far. But you'll see that when I face bosses, this build is going to struggle a bit. So I'm just trying to go to the second tick monster, trying to go forwards to fight Mama Tick. This is not a biome that I come very often because I think in order to access the Morass of the Banished, you have to go through the Dilapidated Arboretum. There is like no other way you can access this biome otherwise. So, kind of a rare biome to be honest, but honestly, if your build is like a ranged setup, then there's no reason you shouldn't come here. So, there we go, Malay's cleared, and I'm not even like watching the invisible enemies, because I know I'm just gonna be able to melt through everything without even like thinking too much about it, so. 
Um, finally, I'm all the way through the biome, and I'm going forward to fight Mama Tick. Mama Tick has like two phases. The first one is just this eyeball phase, which is pretty easy. You do have to watch out for like the tentacles rising up so you don't like get hit. I've seen a lot of people, especially like during the tentacle phase where you have to dodge these different things. You just stay in the corner and roll whenever there's a tentacle. If you count these tentacles, they rise up a total of 25 times exactly. But if you stay in the corner like I did, there are exactly two tentacles that will rise up where your location is. And there I drank the tonic. Thankfully, it took the hit for me, so it wasn't too much of a big deal for me. Um, again, see, uh, there are always two tentacles that rise up if you are staying in the corner. Sometimes they come in quick succession, so there's no way you can like dodge them. And sometimes that's just unfortunate, but that's just how it is. So just gonna drop the turret and try to like wait for the scythe attack to come in, because I don't want to get caught off guard by it, since if I slow down Mama Tick, that the timing becomes all weird. If you're far away from Mama Tick, she will like do that attack where she throws a bunch of like explosive sludge at you but honestly just dodge through it and it's not really a problem i'm going to move forward to the fractured shrines because i haven't been here on 5 bc yet so this is actually my first time on 5 bc that i'm visiting the fractured shrines now like i said in one of the, my previous videos you do get one less scroll stat if you come to the fractured shrines as well as the undying shores I'm not sure why that's the case. So, until this is fixed, I'm probably not going to come to the Fractured Shrines in any of my future runs, because that's just not good. And I'm going to take the Cursed Chest, but however, I have already cleared out this like flying platform area, so I just have to run backwards. So I just have to run back and, and dodging the saw blades and go forward to the main island where there are actually enemies. Again, I think it's a bit too risky if, if you take the Cursed Chest as soon as you see it since there are a lot of flying platforms and you really don't want something to go wrong. So I just take out all the enemies until I reach the main island and then I go back to pick up the curse chest. Luckily with my setup everything just kind of melts and I'm able to lift the curse right after getting the scroll stat. Just two enemies left, um, just gonna kill the serpent and probably the slasher up above. And there we are, curse is lifted. But later you'll see that I run into another type of trouble. So here I'm going to pick up the Scarecrow Sickles just to try out a brand new item. Um, I feel like it's actually pretty decent. I'm going to kill the giant titan monster and I'm going to go into the vault and pick up all the money. Now you'll see here, I don't know what happened but like the game prevented me from jumping like that and it just like, yeah, I don't know what was wrong with that. So that seems to be another bug that needs to be fixed. That feels extremely unfair, because that wasn't even my fault. Unfortunately, I am going to have to spend some money on an additional health flask, so... I just really... That's that's a type of bug I just cannot stand, because that was out of my control. Like, I could not have prevented that. By the end of this biome, I was just going to, like... There was still one additional dual stat scroll, but I just didn't feel like getting it. Because I don't want to see that bug again. Like, losing health... Like, that bug was not my intention. Like, it just, it feels really unfair, so. Until they fix the Fractured Shrines, I'm probably not going to go back here. Uh, mainly because of the lack of scroll stats as well as that annoying bug. So, I reach the end of the biome, I'm going to purchase the Health Flask and I'm going to move on to the Undying Shores. I didn't even explore the other portions of the island that I haven't been to yet because, again, I just don't want to see that bug again. So, really unfortunate, but honestly, I haven't died. One thing I found out about the Undying Shores is that the enemies here solely depend on which biomes you've been through. So if you've been through, like, Corrupted Prison, then you'll find Toxic Miasma here. But the thing is, I didn't go to the Corrupted Prison this run. I went to the Moras instead, so that's the reason why there are, like, Blow Gunners here. Now, obviously, there are, al there are always going to be enemies that's here no matter what, so the apostates as well as like some of the bombardiers. The thing is though, and obviously if you're on like 4 to 5 BC, there will always be failed experiments here because they're pretty much in every single biome. 
And you'll see just how I'm going to struggle with this run since that my scroll stats are going to be less than what they usually are, so... I'm going to have like two less scroll stats in this run because I went to the Fractured Shrines and the Undying Shores. Again, another bug. I just really hope they fix it. Um, and yeah, you'll see the Mushroom Boys here because they were present in the Dilapidated Arboretum. So, it's a really cool concept that I've never really like paid attention to, but... Yeah, the enemy variety here is like solely dependent on which biomes you've been through this run. So that's like really cool in my opinion. And you'll see how much like the sickles are doing here. Because I need to like inflict oil on the enemy, if you can get like the spreading and inflammable oil affix on the sickles, then as long as I tag one of the enemies, then I will activate the critical hits from the ice shards. In this case, it has been just insanely helpful so far. And for what I've seen, and if you position yourself in a specific way, then the sickles will just start to spin around you like infinitely. Which, you know, if you have like a shield, you can just stay in one place and just let the sickle do all the work for you. And you'll see like just how useful it is at this time. The sickle is probably the only weapon in the game that can like hit things one platform above you. The only other skill that can do this, like that kind of resemble this ability is the giant whistle. But I think like the sickle really isn't bad as a skill. It's actually like pretty decent. And part of the reason I'm using the sickle is because I just wanted to try out a new item. And honestly, it has been just working out really well so far. And here, I'm just going to upgrade my power technics and whatever else I can, and I'm going to move on forwards to the mausoleum to fight the Scarecrow. Um, one thing I found out about the Scarecrow fight is that usually the fight is like really, really short. It's only about like 30 seconds long if you do it right. You'll see like just how much damage I'm able to do because the Scarecrow just don't have a lot of health to begin with. And when the mushrooms comes out, you just want to destroy them immediately because they're like, they're going to explode. And if you just let the mushrooms stay there, then the scarecrow will like do this annoying attack where like it bumps the mushrooms in the air and then they explode on you. So just make sure to destroy the mushrooms right away. And yeah, I don't know what I was doing with this run so far. Just playing extremely poorly. Uh, I didn't even use emergency triage because if I did, this fight would have gone a lot more smoother. Um, unfortunately, I used up two health flasks. I did panic a bit in that fight, so I think that's why I healed like too early. I'm going to move on forwards to the distillery. And the reason why I like undual binded my items is because there's like a bug with the barrels. If you have a weapon that slows down things, then the barrels will not like turn friendly for some reason. So because I had the ice shards, I don't want to hit the barrels with the ice shards. Here, I'm just going to move forwards this trap puzzle thing. Um, honestly, they're not that hard once you get used to it. Just roll when the barrels come and they can't get you. Uh, here, I'm just going to pick up the barrel launcher and clear the way. Usually, I don't even want to come up here because the barrel launcher like just doesn't do much. Just going to move on forwards and you'll see just how good the sickles are. Um, if you like position yourself well, then you can hit a lot of things with the sickle. And I chose Distillery because I have a lot of burst damage and I'm able to deal with these living barrels really effectively. If you come to the Distillery, you better have like burst damage. Since the barrels are just going to explode right away, you really want to like kill them quickly before they explode. And yeah, I don't know how I didn't get hit in that encounter. It seemed like really likely that I was going to get hit, but I guess not. So I'm going to pick up the distillery key, pick up the remaining scroll stat, and yeah, you'll see that my scroll stat right now is only 27, which is considered extremely low. So I'm going to move on forwards to fight Hand of the King. This is at 28 scroll stats, so I'm not, I wasn't feeling too confident about this fight. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to the Fractured Shrines and the Undying Shores because they give you one less scroll stat. So had I gone to the other biomes, I would have gotten 30 right now, which is like considered average for a 4 to 5 BC run. So unless they fix the bug, I'm probably not going to go back to the Fatal Falls areas. Yeah, and this fight went a lot worse than I expected. I thought I would be able to do a lot of damage, but I guess I was wrong. Um, because like slowdowns don't really work against boss fights, this is going to struggle for a bit, and for some reason the sickles didn't destroy the flags. I really thought they would. Uh, 
Gonna kill the disgusting worms first because I don't want the bombs to interfere with this fight once the Hand of the King comes down. Um, I get hit once again. Yeah, this fight just really isn't doing too well so far. And plus, I don't have a lot of defense capabilities, so... I'm just gonna wait for the Hand of the King to do one more ground slam and I'm just gonna finish him off. And there we go, fight is complete. Wasn't a really good fight, but I got it done. Um, unfortunately, I am down to one flask charge, so I am going to have to play a bit more cautiously in the Astrolab. Again, I feel like the reason that I have such low health flask charges right now is because I kind of wasted it in the Scarecrow fight. Because I didn't manage my health enough and... Yeah, I probably should have taken the emergency triage in that fight to be honest. But here I'm going to find a tier 12 boomerang and I'm going to replace it with the ice shards. Because it has the affix spreading inflammable oil on the enemy. So I thought it would it's going to fit really well with this build. So I just throw the boomerang and then I hit him with the pyrotechnics. And you saw that like with the bomber, because it's in the air, I couldn't have it interfere while I'm dodging the librarian. So what I did is that I just like used the sickles and it like knocked the bomber out of the air before it could do its like ground slam attack, which is really nice. And you see like how much damage the sickles were able to do to the elite slammers. On second thought, maybe I should have just kept the ice shards in my inventory because honestly the boomerang, like I feel like it's not very good because it doesn't slow down the enemy as opposed to the ice shards. So maybe that was a misplay on my part. But I mean, at this point, I just had to continue on with the run. There really isn't too much I can do. And I kind of just like, yeah, I tried to dodge the bomber, but obviously I couldn't dodge both that and the librarian at the same time. So I had to take a hit, which was very unfortunate. And here, yeah, I don't know, either the Magistrate of Death was just the wizard and it was like, it was just predicted exactly what I was going to do. Or I just got really unlucky. So usually the Magistrates aren't too tough to deal with, but they can get pretty annoying sometimes. I'm just going to lower the Slammer down here just to kill it effectively so I don't have to go up there. I don't like how the terrain looks and I'm just going to use the Homunculus rune. I wanted to talk a bit more about the Iron Staff. It's also one of the new items introduced in Fatal Falls, but honestly, it's not good at all. Like, I've tried to use it off camera, and I just couldn't get it to work. Because, like, it has such a weird combo that you have to, like, parry the first enemy. You have to do a parry in order to, like, deal actual damage. Because if you don't parry something, then the Iron Staff does, like, no damage. But from what I've seen, the critical hits on the Iron Staff is actually pretty massive because I compared it to a Giant Killer and they do actually like do roughly around the same amount of damage. So I just wish there was a better way to use it. Um, it definitely needs a serious rework in my opinion. So I'm going to move on forwards to the fight with the Collector. This is what this is the part where you've all been waiting for. And I don't have a shield like I said in past videos. I really like using shields. They give me a lot more confidence so... But honestly, I just had to make do with what I had. I did have one new item, the Scarecrow Sickles, which is very good. Get hit by the Meteor, unfortunate. Gonna use up one of my Flask Charges. Will I make it past this fight? Well, just watch to find out. Um, so just gonna toss my Tesla coil in the middle of the arena. It just clears out every single mob immediately. I mean, as expected of a item, deserving of S tier. Quaker does its meteor attack, not a problem. Just dodge through it. And here I find out that you can actually dodge through like the beam attack if you just dodge side to side, which is a technique that I learned from some other streamers and I wanted to try it for myself, and thankfully it worked out pretty well. So I believe this is the Collector's second heal. We're going to get teleported to the, to the room with the spike balls. This fight's going a bit longer than I expected. Honestly, I think it's because of the low scroll stats that this fight is taking too long. And yeah, you'll see just how much I'm struggling here. 
Collector teleports one more time to another room with enemies. Again, not really a problem, and I really just see this room as like free hits, honestly. Down to Collector's third heal, and this is gonna be probably the toughest part of the fight, and you'll see in a second, we're gonna return to the place where the beginning of this video started. So again, Meteor's not a problem, just dodge through it. The jab attacks, not a problem either. Sometimes you have trouble predicting like how many jabs Collector is going to do. Again, with the Meteors, I just kind of like, I just kind of let the Sickles do most of the work for me. And yeah, I don't know what I was doing here. I, I usually parry that with a shield, but I guess I just couldn't do it that time. And yeah, you'll see just how close this is. Um, I'm literally down to 17% health. One hit's gonna kill me. But fortunately, I got the Panacea, so... Again, it's not over yet. You'll see just how much damage one of those beam attacks can do. And for some reason, the Collector didn't even do all three of them, so I guess he felt bad for me. Just decided to come down, and I'm able to finally finish the fight. So yeah, what a close call. My heart was like absolutely racing from this fight. I did not expect to win this, honestly. So hopefully you have enjoyed this like glass cannon tactics build featuring the Scarecrow Sickles. Hope you enjoyed it, and when I see you next time, I'm probably going to do a build featuring either the explosive crossbow or the barrel launcher. So until then, stay tuned and thanks for watching.